Hello everyone, I just want to make sure you guys double check to like, comment and subscribe before we start the video. And yeah, let's begin straight away. Alright lads and ladies, let's start another game with Spyro the Dragon. Okay, rolling. Uh, uh, oh, uh, it's been peaceful here in the five worlds. Or is it six? <laughs> For a dragon's age, we now have 12,000 treasure. Or is it 14,000? What about this Ganasty Ganok character? Now, I understand he's found a magic spell to turn gems into warriors for his cause. I'll take that question. Nasty Nork is a simple creature. Simple? He has been contained in a remote world and is no threat to the Dragon Kingdom. No threat? Besides, he is ugly. Ugly? That F. does it! Like I've got some things to do. <laughs> see, through this single live stream, I'm gonna try and see how much of this I can actually 100%. Thank you for releasing me, Spyro. Free ten dragons in the artisan world, then find the balloonist. He'll transport you to the next world. What about Nasty Nork? I'm going after him. Find dragons first. That's all I can tell you. Cool. But yeah, I will 100% this. Wouldn't be the first time. I did actually manage to 100% the PS1 version before. Where's Nasty Nork? I'll torture you! Keep your horns on, Spyro! You have much to learn first. Do you know what the dragonfly following you is doing? Uh... His name is Sparks, and he's helping and protecting you. Keep an eye on him and see what I mean. Cool. More tutorial shit that no one cares about. Frame rate's a little bit choppy, so I might quickly change that a little bit. I think that should be. Yeah, change that to 60 FPS. There we go, that's a bit better. Alright. I'm gonna do some of the more simpler stuff first. But yeah, I will 100% each well as I'm going through. I'm gonna try and do most of this shit from memory. <laughs> Even my cat's watching me right now. this on the switch come on <laughs> well, obviously I didn't manage not to do it in one go, but we're trying. We're gonna try. Hopefully, 
second round. Let's see if we get a perfect run on this. Oh, come on, you stupid dragon. There we go. That's better. Almost had it. All right, let's see if I can try again. You know what they say: the third time is the charm. Let's so, see. Yeah, you get rid of the barrels first. They are usually the easiest to get rid of. Gotcha, bitch. Alright, now time for the treasure chests. If I can make it. Fuck. <laughs> Damn it. I'm trying to get the all in one achievement. that done.
And the last bit. Done. Perfect run. Third time is a charm. We got it, boys. No, I don't want to retry, damn it. Yeah, because I already did it. I already did it once perfectly. <clears throat> that was a bit of a whoopsie daisy on my end. I'm gonna move my table closer so I can actually get to my fucking microphone. Cool. Oh. Fat knacker. Bitch. That's what I thought. Now I've got to go kill a sheep. Oh. There we go. really cool at skill point but oh well we'll take what we can there we go I will not stop until I find every single thing in this game. <clears throat> Once the stage actually loads. There we go. this. Oh. Uh, Lindar. When you free a dragon or step on one of their platforms, you're saving your progress. That could be useful if you run into trouble. Not that you ever run into trouble, Spyro. <laughs> His Spyro always runs into trouble. And this is before they melted Spyro's face in to make him look like a pug. Just like in Team Fortress 2, the fire is there for the players that just do not want to aim. Yeah, I do have my fair share of experience when it comes to... Um, the original Spyro. On gliding. You bet! For the longest glide, press the jump button at the top of your jump. 
and try pressing the action button to drop down mid-flight. Quickly respond to this quick text. Okay, now, let's go kill that blue turban wearing fuck. If I remember whereabouts he is. <laughs> there he is. There's the little bastard. Oh, come on. I know these guys always give, give the fucking worst trouble. There we go. Got the bastard! Alright. Now there should be more treasure. I can't go through those pillars because they're, um... Invisible walls. Luckily, there is a little trick that I learned through the Reignited Trilogy, all thanks to watching Catacarus, is that you can use sparks to locate missing treasure. Alright, see, I can't get to that area whatsoever. Obviously, it'll tell me on the screen if I've collected all the treasure or not. Alright, I'll we'll come back to this area in a sec. So I need to get the key first. I just need to remember which way has the key. Yeah, not in there, I already did this. I'm pretty sure, yeah, I thought I saw a couple bits of treasure. Cool, we got a one up. And this area I'll leave till last as well. Because obviously that's the exit. This is this area. Huh. Now I'm probably just having a big retard moment. Oh wait, no, never mind. No, yeah, I am just having a bit of a retard moment. Forget I said anything. Um. Let's try to go this way. Treasure key was somewhere around near the end. 
Or is it all the boxes in here? Yep, cool. Open the treasure chest. And then save Gavin. Watch the dragonfly, Spyro. His color indicates his power. When he eats butterflies, he stays strong, like me. Uh, There's a Giga Chad sure. dragon. I think I've got, yeah, I've got like nearly all the treasure. And I've saved nearly all the dragons. Oh, so there's gonna be treasure up there, so I've gotta make me way up there. And of course I go the wrong way. So I won't be able, I will not make that landing. Treasure, and we now save Aster. After you've freed all the dragons, pass through this fancy vortex uh, thingamajigger. It'll take you back to the artisan home. But first, let me tell you a story. No thanks. See ya. So, yeah, so use the um, the guy who does the voice of Ratchet from Ratchet and Clank to play Spyro in this. Although I do kind of pref like subconsciously, I do kind of prefer the PS1 voice actor who plays Spyro because it's mostly because of the fact that it's Tom Kenny, the same guy who does the voice of SpongeBob. Hey Spyro, press the jump button twice to glide, and and don't be afraid. Afraid of what? Falling from high mountain peaks? Plummeting into prehistoric glaciers? Oh, that. You will fall from the Skylands. Because a lot of people tend to dismiss the fact that Skylanders is kind of a Spyro series anyway. Come here, bitch. That's what I thought, you dumb fuck. Alright. Let's do it. Now to the next world. Even though I'm probably not doing this in order, but I don't care.
All right, just quickly post it on my Instagram as well. I'm pretty sure I got it saved on my. Damn it! Hold on. No. No. I'm trying to find the clipboard on my bloody. Uh. When I eventually get this shit together. No, not translate. Clipboard, that's what I wanted. Uh, twitch, 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 twitch. There we go. And... Post. Woo, okay. Yeah, because the main reason why I'm playing Spyro, but I want something to, I want to play, wanted to play something a little bit different, considering obviously that, from what you guys see me struggle playing Crash Bandicoot. Welcome to Town Square, Spyro. Begin exploring by gliding to that area with the bulls. Use the right stick to get a good look. Yes, as if you can uh, not figure out how the standard functions of a controller. The only part of this level that I know that's a fucking challenge is the, um, is trying to capture the thief. So, remember, back in the day, I never had so much of a challenge. Thanks, Spyro. <laughs> I had the worst itch on the tip of my wing. Did you know that you get your longest glides by pressing the jump button at the very top of your jump? The one thing I would say is a little bit of an improvement over the PS1 version is that the dragons individually when you save them do have different personalities. Whereas in the PS1 version they are all literally just exactly the same, just with a slightly different colour. Well apart from when you reach specific dragons in certain worlds. Like they'll have like a different well, they'll have a slightly different texture. Spyro, do you see a man dressed in blue running around here? He's a thief and he's stolen a dragon egg. You've got to track him down and, and get that egg. Run, run. <laughs> I'm getting a little winded. Hmm. Damn. Well, I guess I gotta go chase that turban boy somehow. You little blue bastard! Well, he's kind of like the Noid from Domino's. But it's like, bruh. You little blue turban wearing bastard.
Come on. Got your faggot. Now I can just focus on getting the last of that treasure. If I remember where it is. Treasure, and I think we now got all the dragons. Thor. Thank you for releasing me, Spyro. You can always check your progress by accessing the guidebook through the pause menu. Because it was the one feature that they added into this game. But the original did not have it unless you knew how to do the guide. Actually, no, yeah. No, it did have it on the PS1 version, actually. The more I think about it. Yeah, because in the PS1 version, yeah, I remember you, um, you press select, you were able to see each world and what, how much, um, things you had left to collect. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna check every corner. We're doing alright so far, and I've only been recording for, wow, not even an hour, and I've, and I know I've nearly finished the first world already. Then again, it did take me about nearly nine hours just to beat Crash Bandicoot in a single sitting. <laughs> Stupid fat fucks don't know what they're missing. Nailed it. The Alvin. Oh, it's you. I wasn't sure if you'd escape those annoying little creatures. Of course they wouldn't bother me, but here's a hint. Their metal armor is fireproof, but a charge attack will take care of them. Yeah, so why can't you do it instead? <laughs> Okay. 
Master Oswin. Psst. Spyro, you want to know a secret? Use the action button when you want to zoom in and look around. Paul, your secret's safe with me. Got almost all the bits and pieces. Yeah, because the first world that you go through in Spyro is obviously just literally no different. Well, I say no different. It's literally just a um, your basic tutorial world. Like it gives you a like some of the basics on all the usual shiz, like the controls. Uh, how bosses work and all that. You know, just the standard crap. I know we haven't had a proper um, Spire game come out for a good few years. That I, that I definitely do know, because the last thing we had, like solo Spire wise, was part of the Begin Legend of Spire show, do I believe? The clock cannot be charged, but a quick flame, that should defeat them. Yep, 100%. I think I've only got like a one or two more stages left of the first world. Artisan's boss is through a portal behind me. You can challenge him now, if you feel you are ready. <laughs> My dude is just holding a melon. First boss, let's go. Yes. Yeah, the only thing that's more challenging in this level are the fucking dogs themselves. If anything, the dogs in this level are more dangerous than the boss. <laughs>
if I remember correctly, there might be a dog hiding. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> oh well, I died. Better try again. Double tap him. So there's not really too much of a delay on um, the breath attack. <laughs> Burn in hell, you little grey bastard! More of a bottomless abyss, but yeah. Never. Nasty Nork has put one of his most devious henchmen in charge of the artisan world. Bring him on! I think I smell a barbecue. Be careful, Spyro. Toasty has many tricks up his sleeve. <laughs> Even though this boss is literally a joke of a challenge. Yeah, it's just a sheep. A sheep in wolves clothing. Shit. Hey, gotcha. on me. I think that's the level 100% now. Yep. I was gonna say, I fucking find out really weird if it wasn't. But oh well. And I think that all that's left to do now is... Yeah, gather the last of this treasure. Oh, well, I still got a couple bits of treasure missing, apparently. Ah. There we go. There we go, all done. Haha, <laughs> bonus life. Right, so so far, alright, cool, we 100 percent all that. Wow! I see you've been busy rescuing Dragon Spyro. You may travel to the Peacekeeper's world if you like. Are you ready to go? Yeah, let's go! Hop on, Spyro! Hit 1,000 treasure down. 
about another 11,000 to go. <laughs> So I know you got the final stage where it's literally just one big open area. Welcome to Peacekeepers. Look how our treasure has been stolen and turned against us. Please. Recover our treasure, Spyro. Collect treasure. Got it. No, you fucking thought, you bitch. sure I can open something with a cannon. But I can't remember if it's like around here or like later in the level. I'll figure it out. So how much treasure is it I gotta find? Literally 200 bits of treasure. Try his first level already. Yes. So peaceful. <laughs> Gotcha. How wood? Conan the Barbarian. What? Huh? Oh. Thank you for releasing me, Spyro. <laughs> How? Try and use your chicken defenses against me. Oh. 
Did we get every bit of treasure around here? Huh. Guess I must have. Ivor. Is that you, Spyro? Are you the young dragon I've been hearing so much about? Ever since you were a wee puff of smoke, we've known, uh, You've known... Ah, uh, I forget. Yeah, we know that Activision will not do very much with your franchise anymore. For some reason. Casual. I know there's a treasure chest over there, so I probably won't bother with that yet until later. I know there's rabbits and shit over there that I can use to recharge sparks. Sparkly shit in the first second. I was like, Is there anything in this room? No, cool. Nothing over here, nothing over here, nor there. Her maxi moves? Glad, Spyro. Well, he definitely is maximum or something. Those ugly vultures standing on my head. Those birds might look tough, but they're pretty tasty. Flame broiled with a pinch of salt. Too easy to be, in fact. And there we go. I 
think I got the majority of it now. Got it all. Hey, <laughs> they got nowhere to hide. We got this. you want, you know it ain't happening. <laughs> to be honest, though, the soundtrack despite it literally being exactly the same as the PS1, pretty much. It goes pretty hard. There he is. Gotta turn the corners a bit more quickly. Ah. Oh. Gotcha. Helverus. How's a dragon supposed to flame metal armor anyway? Remember, Spyro, flame won't work on metal, but charge it with your horns? That should do the trick. Wow. You think you can try and take on me? Adorable. You motherfucker. Pretty sure I saw some gizzard lizards. Yeah.
could have sworn you just summoned another. Oh well. Oh yeah, that I need to use the fireworks for. Which I can't get to yet. You glide there and find out. You stupid fucking idiot. that shit achievement of flaming every vulture in dry town otherwise I wouldn't get the, the fucking crystals you can get to almost anywhere from here if I were you I'd use that whirlwind over there I'm sure there's a hidden area that I gotta get to as well. But I can't remember where it is. That's all of it. I'll trust within the dragonfly.
There we go. Did it. Android Canyon. Uh, I won't do that bit just yet. Megan. Hey, Spyro. Sparks the Dragonfly has been doing a good job protecting you. Make sure you're just... keeping strong by feeding him lots of butterflies. I mean, my dude right there is just an absolute unit. Wait. We got this. There we go. Ulrich. Word of caution, little one. Wait until you grow big, <clears throat> like me, before charging those large enemies. Why do they why do they try to make every single dragon look like a fucking absolute chad? up ahead are wearing armor and in the ice cave armor can make their feet very slippery <sighs> oh wow a tutorial lesson
got this. Alright, so I need a key again. Thank you for not giving me a tutorial mission. Because I don't think I need it. I think when the dragons say thank you for releasing me, it's the, the most overused copy and paste line in this game. Just to open it. Yeah, I already came through that area. Alright, there's nothing behind here, because I think I, re yeah, I already went through that when I had to go grab the key and then find a way back to light, solid ground. Usher, uh, yo, the artist? For freeing me, Spyro. And now, oh, where was I? Damn, you've been frozen that long, you fucking got Alzheimer's. I gotta remember how. Yes. Big brain. <laughs> My dude didn't even fall in, he just phased out of existence. Alright, you fucking fat little cunt.
There we go. Recharge the dragonfly. <laughs> Parry this, you fucking casual. Damn it! Yeah, that's what you get. No bad. Wow, I obtained all treasure. You've done well, Spyro. Some dragons thought you weren't ready. But I knew they were wrong. I'm ready, all right. Uh, ready for what? Now I just gotta remember, how the fuck does one get over there? The level itself is 100%, but I want to get those two extra lives. Because I'm pretty sure I can get to it if I get to that higher level. Gonna pick you back on solid ground. if my dumbass brain could figure this out. Yeah, so pretty much back at the beginning of the level. level. Protecting the fucking flight level from me. You asshole! Make sure there's nothing behind it. Alright. Let's do another flying level, see how many attempts it'll take me to do this one. Okay. 
Yeah, there's no way I would have probably done that in one go. We'll give that another try, shall we? Yeah, there's no one I'm gonna make it. Yeah, thought not. <laughs> Let's try that again. Yeah, get rid of the rings, because they're just there. Damn it, I almost had it. <laughs> One more time. I, I fucked it. I want to try and do it smoothly in one go, but no, it wasn't going to happen. No, you motherfucker. <clears throat> Almost had that shit.
That would not have worked at all. Ah, I'll get there. I'll get there. I'll get there and have the treasure. I need the treasure. Perfect run, let's go! Yeah, boy! I nailed that shit, and in a shorter t uh, timing than the one from the. No, I don't want to fuck it! Oh my god. I've got to be more careful when it comes to that final screen, but like, no! I want to quit instead of trying again! Two things for one. Well done, Spyro. Keep up the good work, and I know you'll fulfill your destiny. Yes, Gunner Hansen. I just want to kick some. Just toast those enemies and collect the treasure. Hey, trust me, I know what I mean because I've got an eye patch, which means I've seen some shit. You can always trust a man with an eye patch. Before I do Dr. Shemp, but, uh, let's see, that's just a regular treasure chair. That's one that can be. Now, where did I see that treasure chest? Oh, there's a one up over there. I'm pretty sure I saw a treasure chest somewhere. seeing things. might be in there, which I could just use that cliff edge to get to. But also, I think my brain has just uh, realized something. There we go. My brain was like, are you stupid?
don't, do you even know the concept of laying low? More treasure, bitch. Alright, now I can do the Dr. Shem level, so I think that's the only one that's left. Did I do Cliff? Yeah, I did do Cliff Town, yeah, so it's just Dr. Shem that I gotta do. Oh, my neck. I've got a bit of a stiff neck now. Yeah, Dr. Shemp is a, um, like a witch doctor kind of guy. But he doesn't say the magic words. He doesn't go, ooh, ee, ooh, ah, ah, ting, tang, walla, walla, bing, bang. listening to him over and over but I tell you one thing he should watch his back <laughs> get it it's a hint on how to take him out just occasionally go around the arena make sure there is no treasure I don't want to leave any treasure lingering about
faggot. I do like the sound design of the little clickly clackly noises that Spyro's feet make when he runs. Just a little. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, three thousand treasure. I think the Peacekeeper's world is yeah, everything's all one hundred percent. All right, let's go to the next world. First, I might need to grab some shit from the dragon. Motherfuckers, I literally just fucking got him back. You found so much stolen treasure. I mean, the fact that I've only been doing this for about. Hop aboard for the Magic Crafters world if you're ready. Hop on, Spyro. I'll say, like, I've only been doing recording this for almost two hours. It's going quite well so far. Oh god, my neck, my back, my. See him, my uh, crack. Welcome to Magic Crafters. I want you to release the dragons, reclaim our treasure, and recover the eggs from those pesky blue thieves. <laughs> Line them up and take them out one after the other. Got you, cunt. Thought you could run away from me. Oh, 
Come on, you turban wearing bastard. Ah. Oh. Gotcha. It's not too bad. going to be a bit of an annoying level, because obviously it's going to be more platform focused. Gigantic, awful beasts, are you? Of course not. Oh, good. <laughs> I didn't think so. I didn't think so.
Motherfuckers trying to stop me from getting here. God, my legs, they're killing me. Remember how? Probably the latter one, but yeah. How in the fuck do I get over there? Oh, 
how can I can't remember how to do this? Oh shit! The dragon knows how to help me. Oh, Spyro, you're not afraid of those big, noisy, gigantic, awful beasts, are you? Of course not. Oh, good. I didn't think so. No. Just tells me about the beasts. a wow noise as well, which does not help. Ah! God damn it. So I just got, it's literally just a case of me just being completely impatient. God, I'm a fucking idiot. See, I'll take out the guys over there. On the one hand, at least it stops me from rushing through everything. Or attempts to, at least. Come on. Unless I have to exit the level and then go back into it. <laughs> See, it might be a loading issue or some shit, I don't know. I'll say because I wasted like a good 
nearly half hour on that one bit. Right, exit the level and go back into it. I think it might have been just a, um, a spawning issue, maybe. Yeah, so I know there's no um, treasure or anything here. Basics. See him. Motherfucker. Oh, well, I think I might have to actually reload the game and try it that way. Hello, everyone. I just want to interrupt this half of the video. Just to let you all know that about 90% of you are not subscribed to the channel. If you want to help support this video, make sure you go on my description down below, follow me on all my social medias, and also don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And then you'll be all up to date with every single bit of nonsense that I always clip into this channel. Thank you, and I love you all. Alright, lads and ladies, let's go back to playing some more Spyro. I'm going to quickly pause the game for a sec, I think I finally figured out the issue for the game. Yeah, apparently it's because I had the game set to um Yeah, I had the game uh set to um Um, 60 FPS whereas apparently I looked up online allegedly you have to have the game's graphics set at 30 FPS for the door to actually work in this level no idea how or why that works but we're gonna roll with it anyway and I'm just gonna quickly open the chat logs up on my phone so I can actually read shit as well but yeah let's carry on with what we're gonna try and do There we go. Ah, oh, you motherfucker. See, apparently it's due to a frame issue. 
on the PC version. Now that that's done, <laughs> I'm gonna turn the graphics back to its default. <laughs> God fucking damn it! Yo, that dragon looks fucking sick. Yeah, this is gonna be like the first proper time I will be like, um, attempting to. Well, I don't even know what I'm saying actually. I'll say because obviously, uh, when you guys are watching this on YouTube, the footage will all be blended together. But in reality, where I was playing this on Twitch earlier, well, like I am right now, I had to stop the Twitch stream. Yeah, I had to stop the Twitch stream all because I ran into the issue of the gate not opening for me to move to this next area. So yeah, it turns out it was a frame rate issue, not actually anything game-wise. Well, not game-wise. Um, like I thought it was like something wrong with the level or some shit, but no, it turns out it was literally just something to do with um, like the frame rate. No idea why, but you know it's over and done with now. Blue bitch. Come here, you little blue bitch. Ah, damn it. God damn it. Kill everything. Because fuck it. Now I can build up the life meter. So I can get that one up back. Cool, I got an extra gem. Yeah, I'll um. Yeah, I'll, I'll rescue Xander. Great work, Spyro! If you keep this up, you'll learn all the tricks of the Magic Crafters world. I'm gonna move the microphone a bit closer to me so I can actually speak into it properly. Yeah, let's go kill this uh, turban wearing fuck. Come here, you little bastard.
Come on. Got him. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I missed a box or two of um, treasure. Yeah, thought I did. Kelvin, ha! It's funny because it's like the heat. Remember that these blue thieves have stolen eggs outside the Magic Crafters' world as well. Don't worry, I'll take care of them. I mean, so far we've pretty much got most of them already. Ah, shit. Oh, at least I tried. Hundred percent of the level. Yeah, I'm editing it when I um, have this on YouTube, which I'm pretty sure most of you guys will probably be watching anyway. I'm gonna have all the video footage put together. So yeah. Yes. Alright, let's do a look. Save another dragon. Xantor. When you see arrows like these, you can charge along with them to begin a supercharge. A supercharge! Super Excellent! Go ahead, try it! Gotta love those numbers. <laughs> more treasure means more steps to, um... Yeah. <laughs> level. Oh! I've been slapped. Cyrus! Please do something about these green druids. They insist on moving everything in sight. Okay. Whatever you say, big boy. Hmm. 
I want to think this through carefully, so I'm going to go through this area first. Like I say, make sure there was nothing there for me to plummet to my death. Ow. Oh shit. Let me pass. God damn it. You. most of them. It ain't much, but it's a good start. See, I'm pretty sure there's at least one spider left. Alright, now he's deathly green. Now we're making blue. One cool little detail is when I see sparks pick up the the gems for me as well as a nice little additional um, animation detail. One thing I probably might try actually, if I circle around it by flying, I should be able to roast that fuck e easily. Alright, fuck it. Come here, you bastard. Aha. Got you, bitch. Alright, so that's all the spiders taken care of. Alright, while it's doing that, I hear some shit going on downstairs. I hate those bugs. When I become big and strong like you, I'll squash them all. Until then, remember that Supercharge makes you invincible.
it was literally just a postman. And I accidentally disconnected my phone charger because I can only look at the chats and stuff onto my phone because I do not have two monitors. It only has the one, I'm afraid. So that's the home portal. I'm gonna put my blind down so I can actually fucking see my TV. Try combining your supercharge with jumping and gliding, and really explore the high caves. Oh really? You don't say. grab as much of this shit as I can. And this is a dead end. You little... Ah, shit. Ah, luckily, the fairy saved me. Fuck. I thought I had it then. Apparently not. Gotcha, you, you turban wearing fuck. <laughs> thought you can outsmart me. Alright, so dead end. Another dead end. Go check every corner because I refuse to have the map function on. Unless I'm in like an obviously big level that I cannot explore. But only when it gets to like the um, the treetop level, I think is the only one where I'm actually going to need the map. Cool, the fairies can take me back. Wait. Yeah, I did that shit a bit too early. Oh hello, how's good old Spyro going? Sp good old Spyro is going quite well actually, thank you for asking. Sir Frenzy G. At the moment I am trying to get to a hidden area. At the moment. And obviously that did not work. I'll try harder next time. Yep, nah, that's not gonna work. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I could accept my defeat, but I refuse. Ugh. A little bit late before the drum and try to get on the other side of the brick. Ah. There you go, I think I got it now. I literally just read your comment as I did it. <laughs> but thank you for the tip. 
shit. Nothing else in here. No, cool. Now dive off the edge. <laughs> Now, don't need to go through here anymore, I just need now gotta backtrack through the other area. Surprisingly I haven't died on this level yet, so so far, so good. Question, do you have the camera set to active or passive? You can find it in the options. Uh, camera. I'll ch have it to active, see if that changes anything. I don't know why it's uh, changing, but I've got it switched to active, so I don't know if that changes anything. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right, so I still got a bit to explore. All right. And obviously that didn't work. Try active. It makes it so you don't have to manually move the camera as much. Uh, okay. To be fair, I don't mind moving the camera quite often because it's um I know it, it just tickles my brain the right way <laughs> if that makes any sense now I just gotta figure out where I'm supposed to be going because I know her so I'm gonna try and 100% it it might take a little bit to adjust, and it's fair for everyone to have their preferences. Yeah, I mean, everyone has their um, personal preferences. Um, but yeah, I want to stick with uh, how it is at the moment, and then just see how, well, just to see what works for me personally. Because obviously I'm probably going to do to change it anyway as I go along further into the game. According to Sparks, there's more treasure that way. Now the real question is, where is it? Ah, I see. It probably it must be on the uh, bridge. Oh, I see. I think they have to take you all the way to the top of the bloody tower. Anything here? Aha! I see. I see now. Ha 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 Very clever. And I completely missed that jump. <laughs> <laughs> Also, if you get lost, there is an option label to the map. Yeah, I'm aware of the um, the map function for the remake. Me personally, I um, I'm gonna try and see how far I can get without using the map, and then eventually, when I um, obviously get stuck, I feel like that's when I will probably use the map. So I know one level in particular I'm definitely going to end up using the map for, and that is the um, the treetops level, which is obviously, I believe it, I think that's the next world? 
Yeah, I think it's in like the more swampy areas later in the game. I think it's definitely got to be in the next world. But yeah, the um, yeah when I get to the treetop level, that's when I definitely know I'm going to need the um, the map function because that level is a pain in the backside. All right. There we go. Now, I have nearly everything, I think. Fun and simple. Pain in the butt to also everywhere else. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's pretty much like the uh, the road to nowhere from Crash Bandicoot, but in Spyro. <laughs> Uh, is there any more sheep, or did I, I think I might have accidentally killed them all? Oh well. There we go. Alright, now I can um, reach the end of Z level. Boom. Done. I know, let's go. <laughs> Nailed it. Alright. Ah. Tell me about yourself. Well... I... well... Obviously, I run not only this uh, Twitch channel, but I also do run my my own personal YouTube channel where I post some of my um, live stream recordings and all that. I also do make other videos where I talk about anime as well, some movies, and currently writing some video game retrospectives. And so far, the games that I've done retrospectives on, I've done Oddworld, Abe's Odyssey, and Resident Evil so far, but I am working on some other um, content at the moment as well. I'm currently working on a video where I go in full depth talking about the original Manhunt, Devil May Cry, uh, the later Oddworld games, and so forth. I also do have some anime videos I do plan on getting out as soon as possible. Um, if you want to find the YouTube channel itself, uh, you can literally just search the name of my Twitch channel on here. You could potentially find it on um, on YouTube if you look for channels. I can't. I don't think the um, the profile picture of my avatar on YouTube is the same as my Twitch one, so I really should change it later at some point. But yeah, some of the videos I do, I, when I stream every now and then, well, as much as I can, I do like to mostly not only stream this, because I'm only doing uh, Spyro and Crash Bandicoot as a little side bit at the moment, because I've been mostly live streaming uh, the newest One Piece game, uh, One Piece Odyssey, mostly because I've been on a massive One Piece kick at the moment. Mostly with uh, rereading the manga, watching the live action TV series as well, and watching, re watching certain arcs of the anime as well. Ah, uh, cool. Thank you for uh, finding me on there. <laughs> yeah, I try to upload at least as much as I possibly can. I will have like big time gaps where um, obviously I won't live stream anything at all. But you know, you only do what you can. I think that this is actually the first I've actually put two and two together on the. By like doing that whole flight level in one go. I think that's at least taken me at least one or two attempts to try and do that. I think that's the first I've ever done it all in one fat go. But yeah, um, when it comes to uh, the content of my videos, I do like to... Um, well, it's mostly just me just chatting about the stuff I enjoy, really. But when it comes to 
other bits of the content, like there was at one point, one of my friends came to me, well on the topic of anime, what dubbed anime is on par with the sub variant? Oh, that is a very good question actually. Um, if I were to pick at least three dubbed versions of anime that I personally prefer on par with the subbed, uh, One Piece definitely up there. Uh, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. But the only downplay I do believe that Jojo's Bizarre Adventure has is obviously the localized names of certain abilities and characters that they have in that show. But it's only because of copyright law they actually have to change it. And the only other one I would say it's pretty much a toss up between. Akira, because I watched the dub of that before I saw the sub version. Or maybe... I don't know, I guess the... The Chainsaw Man dub is actually quite good at the moment. I haven't finished watching the dub version. I know a few friends told me that I should watch the dub version um, after binging the subbed. But yeah, I think it's alright. But I do plan to cover more anime on my channel, because I know I've got um, Jojo parts 5 and 6 to cover on there. Uh, Spy Family I plan to cover on the channel at the moment, but I might wait until I see the Spy Family movie, because that's only just come out in the UK. And also I do plan on covering uh, some of the One Piece movies as well. But, you know, only time will tell, really. I don't plan a lot of my content, most of it I... But I'll write it up and then leave it for about a good month or so, then just forget about it. <laughs> I'm not exactly one for planning ahead. But I do remember... Um couple years back I did put down a video of anime that I definitely plan on what that I want to cover on the channel. But it was mostly like a few obvious shows and a few um, um, anime movies as well. But mostly it's just been trying to figure out what I want to do next. I've got a bunch well of videos already done, written up. Spyro. Thank you for releasing me. Uh, for me, I only found one that I have from uh, that I, well, I have watched is Spice and Wolf. It's on the older side of anime, but it has a fan. I've heard of Spice and Wolf. I have a few friends that actually have watched it. I've not seen it myself at the moment. I don't know if it's on Crunchyroll or not. Because mostly I've been trying to use my Crunchyroll account as much as I possibly would. Because I didn't use it for a while, but now I'm just getting back into doing it. <laughs> um, but no, I would say watch the dub of uh, JoJo. Because it captures like the same kind of vibe as the sub version. But obviously the sub version of JoJo is more supreme. But I also do kind of prefer the... Um, like obviously what I mentioned before, the dub to One Piece. Mostly, I just find it a little bit more better. And like the dub, like some, when it comes to some dubs of anime though, it does seem like pretty obvious which ones that sound better. Like the English dub to Dragon Ball Z. In comparison to the original Dragon Ball, I do prefer DBZ's dub. Mostly because I do not like um, Goku's, like Kid Goku's um, dub voice. But I know it's the same actress who does the voice acting for um, Gohan as well, and Goten. And I have just killed myself. <laughs> oh, it is on Crunchyroll. Well, uh, I might eventually uh, get around to watching it, because I know the only stuff I'm currently watching right now... I'm currently... yeah, I'm currently watching the dub of Chainsaw Man. I'm currently wait. I am waiting on the final season of Beastars to come out, but I know that won't be out at least until nearer to the end of the year. Because I know Netflix announced that it's going to be split into two halves. 
<laughs> yeah, it's a big F. <laughs> but I am also trying to look more into the um, the rumored announcement of JoJo Part Seven uh, currently being adapted. I know it's only rumored at the moment, and some people are trying to post um, leaks and stuff online about saying that it's definitely in production. I'll only believe it when I see a teaser or something. <laughs> Mostly because I know how goated part 7 of JoJo actually is. Like, if you read part 7 of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, it's literally mind-blowing. And I feel like that's where the series actually hit its peak. Well, from the manga at least. I haven't read part 9 yet all the way through. But I know on the subject of manga as well, I am currently um, reading through uh, parts of One Piece from the very beginning. Because I'm currently on... Uh, what arc am I on right now? I'm on the... I'm not long before the time skip happens. So I believe I'm currently on the Saba Odi Archipelago. See, I'm near the end of that. I just have yet to see the Straw Hats get separated yet. And also I am currently uh, waiting to hear more news about... Season 2 of Netflix's live action One Piece. Because obviously I did a video on that as well. And honestly, having um, Netflix's live action adaptation of One Piece be the massive hit that it is was a massive relief to see. Because Netflix have had a bit of a mixed bag when it comes to live action adaptations of anime. Like they did. Like obviously they completely botched everything with their live action Death Note adaptation. But they have done a couple good ones here and there. Like they did um, a live action adaptation of Bleach, which was alright. Listen carefully. And Simon. also they did um, a, the a Full Metal Alchemist world. trilogy. The Only the first Time one I would say is the better there. one out of the three, but um Sounds good. Full Metal Alchemist the second Full Metal Alchemist movie was kind of it started strong, but then it went a little bit bland. And then the third one, it just felt like they just tried to cram way too much of the original plot in to try and fit into sort of like a two and a half hour movie. But I can see that the effort was there. But yeah, because I do know that's another subject I do want to try and uh, cover on the on the channel as well with talking about live action adaptations of anime. Because I know I did uh, not only Dragon Ball Evolution, but I also did do um, yeah Netflix's One Piece series. But I do plan on covering some of the others, like um, Speed Racer, uh, Ghost in the Shell, Gintama, Assassination Classroom. You know, just the usual bits and pieces. Thank you for the achievement. <laughs> But I know another video I do plan on doing as well later this year, uh, at around, I want to say like late August, early September, I'm going to be doing a video or where I'm going to be on a trip to London and I will be going to an anime convention. And I'm going to try and record the entire experience up in London. It'll be me and my best mate Ethan. Yeah, Assassination Classroom I know brought a lot of people to tears because it, it was... I never finished the original series, I do plan on maybe going through it. I do remember watching the live action adaptation back when that came out. And my only opinion on it was, it was... It was alright. One too much to uh, write home about, but it was accurate enough, I, j I might say.
Oh, you motherfucker, I almost got you. But I know, obviously, um, what they did for Assassination Classroom is when they did um, Korra Sensei in live action. Obviously, with his design and everything, it's going to be a bit difficult to get a character like that fully realized in live action. But I can see that the effort was there, at least. Like, they tried their hardest with a character like that. But it does make you think, though, like, what they're going to do for, um, other potential characters in anime, like, with, um, the confirmation we had about One Piece Season 2, where they're going to have, um, Tony Tony Chopper introduced, because obviously they're going to be doing everything through to the Alabaster arc, which means we're going to have to have Tony Tony Chopper who is a character that is... Well, I don't know if you've watched One Piece or read One Piece, at least. But, um... Chopper is... Well, in case you don't know, yeah, um... Chopper is a reindeer that can shapeshift. It's possibly the easiest way I can describe his character. You've not seen a single episode of One Piece. I would recommend reading the manga. Read the manga first. I would say would be the best bet to go. Or if you want to go over gloss over the first main arc of the series, watch the Netflix series. Yeah, watch the Netflix series first because it covers like the first um, eleven and a half volumes of the manga. But I know the obvious daunting part of One Piece is how long the series actually is as a whole. So I know with the UK release, with the manga, the... I think the volume count of One Piece is currently at 105, 106 volumes, but only for the UK release. Um, I believe the Japanese release right now of the manga is currently on... 109 volumes, I think they're on right now. I'm aware there is a low round. Yeah, we recently had um, episode 1100, which I think came out this Saturday just gone. I haven't watched the newest episode yet, mostly because I, I think it's mostly just filler at the moment. You can easily just gloss over most of One Piece because there is most, like, it's mostly just filler that you can just gloss over very quickly and just get to the real meat of the story. But it is like, or like pretty much peak fiction at this point. <laughs> And, like, very few manga have actually managed to do that at the moment. Like, to me, I would say the the few manga that I've read, I'd say is peak fiction, like, hit peak fiction level, is um, One Piece and Berserk and Goodnight Pun Pun. Like, I would say those few, possibly one of the most goated mangas I've read in a long time. There we go. Uh, did I miss a sheep? No, I didn't miss a sheep. I'm just going to have to wing it. But yeah, I know one of the, um, the BRB, I'm gonna go get a drink. Alright, yeah, no worries, I'll uh, still be streaming and waiting for you. Ah, 
Ah, no, you don't. me Spyro you have no idea how long I've been trapped in crystal and uh, neither do I who are you again um I'm out of here it's been a thousand years since I've been trapped in this cocoon of crystal and you can tell because I'm so damn old I remember when AOL used to be a thing. Uh, you haven't missed so much at the moment. Um, I already died once. <laughs> but I'm now back on track to where I was, so not too much time has gone past, luckily. I'm just doing a little bit of multitasking and... Um, well, I say multitasking, literally just gem hunting while trying to take on this boss. But I think he's almost done now. Yeah, doing most of like the 100%ing of Spyro at the moment is, um... Well, I'm mostly just trying to do this from memory, because I... I remember last year, I didn't record it on stream, unfortunately, but I 100%ed the PS1 version of this. Before I sold my copy. <laughs> I remember you either had phone or internet, not both. Uh, I was gonna say, I'm gonna def definitely start showing my age. Uh, too bad, I didn't have my first phone until I was around. Oh god, I gotta actually think now. I think I had my first phone, like my own personal phone, I was around. 8 or 9, I think, when I first had my very. Like my own personal phone. Mostly because of the fact that I just wasn't trusted. <laughs> but no, yeah, like, I, I know I definitely didn't have the internet growing up. I didn't have, um... Because I had the... I only started using the internet when I was about... 10? Like, 10 or 11? And I remember the one of the first few YouTubers that actually got me interested into doing film, well not filmmaking, but like uh, making videos in general. I was inspired by YouTubers like um, Only Plays, uh, Angry Video Game Nerd, and the Nostalgia Critic. It's a family tradition for my first phone. Oh, okay. This was it, now I gotta definitely try and start showing some of my age because I'm. This was it, I only recently turned 24 and I'm. And life is just not that easy getting my old age. Before I know it, I'll probably end up turning senile. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it's not easy getting old. And it's possibly the most relatable quote in all of, um, well, every Studio Ghibli film I've seen. <laughs> From, um, what was it, Howl's Moving Castle. Don't worry, you still have about five years before your pack starts playing. 
Now, my lower back is already like <laughs> already messed up because I work in uh, well, I say I work in retail, which I do, but the only issue of working in retail is um, my back betrays me because I do mostly just heavy lifting at work. That and also because I just don't like it. <laughs> Did I pick up the um, the key or not? But then again, it doesn't exactly help with the fact that I spend most of my time just always hunched over sometimes. Like, even when I'm reading and trying to enjoy myself, I'm like, nope. My back always must be hunched over. Like a little troll. <laughs> then they tell you to use your knees for lifting. To be fair, no one really tells me anything at work, so I'm just like, you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna just roll with it. <laughs> because why not? But luckily, this week's gonna be a bit of an easy one for me anyway, because I, um, well, obviously, since it's my day off today anyway, I'm gonna be live streaming more of uh, Spyro. So I started doing it this like, earlier this morning, but then I, um, ran into like a frame rate issue because one of the earlier levels I was doing wasn't act like properly working so I had to restart everything and um, took a little bit of a break first um, but yeah now I'm obviously back to where I am I think the rule is if anything is um, 20k's or over you must bend your knees to pick it up yeah, I mean, that, I think that is like, just pretty much like a standard rule for most places, especially if you're doing anything that involves lifting. Then again, I think it's just common sense, really. <laughs> but, you know, as a stupid young male like myself, we don't listen to common sense. Common sense listens to us. Thank you, Spyro, for recovering so many of our dragon eggs. Hop aboard for the Beast Maker's world if you're ready. Would you like to go? Yeah, let's go to the Beast Ma Beast Masters. Yeah, with my work, I can easily move 500 kilograms of stuff a day. Honestly, I don't think I would ever manage. I think my arms probably just might snap off at that point, <laughs> lifting that much weight. <laughs> I am a weak little tool. <laughs> I'm a weak little boy. Oh, I thought it was a secret down there. There we go. Can you carry a bag of cement powder? I probably could. I mean, most of the heavy stuff I get, it's usually some of the random crap that people try to send off through the post office that I have connected to the store as well. Because like 90% of my time, I'm just stuck behind there. And it used to be so beautiful. I'm sure it was. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'll be fine, actually, yeah, like, the more I, um, like, obviously, like, the more you, um, work at it, the easier it gets. Pretty much like the old saying goes, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <clears throat> but no, I'm also, um, yeah, thinking back to my YouTube channel, I know one of the most recent videos that I've been doing, well, some of the most recent stuff I've been doing recently, I was surprised on some of the positive reception it got beyond that. Like with uh, my Resident Evil video, I was surprised that the amount of people that actually looked at it caught me by off guard by surprise. And it was the same when I did, um, so there was a video I had originally planned for, um, well, I originally planned to release the video on Valentine's Day, but also for, um, like whenever International Women's Day was, which I tried looking on the calendar, but then realized I missed it by quite a bit. I, um, 
I released a video which you could probably see in the most recent stuff that I did is where I talk about the best women in fiction. Like, I originally was just gonna make it like the top best waifus or whatever in anime. But then I I thought about it and I was like, you know what, instead of making it on just women in anime, I might as well make it about other female characters like in general, like including both video games, comic books, and movies. And I was surprised, like, the amount of people, like, some people agreed with it as well, like, I had ended up getting a few DMs on my Instagram and my Twitter, and they were like, oh yeah, like, I actually do agree with this, I feel like you should add this character instead of this, so, I remember I had some of my friends get involved in it as well, which was even funnier. So I think the, my favourite response I had was, um, my friend Ethan... I was going through the list with him beforehand, and one of the characters I put on there was Power from. Well, I had to put multiple characters from Chainsaw Man because I couldn't decide between like just one character. So I was like, all right, then I'll um, I'll go for a character like Power and Himeno because mostly they are just straight up like greatest female characters in the series. Like. Makuma is just too basic, in my opinion, because obviously she has her fans and all that crap. But, yeah, it's like when one of my friends found out that I had power in Himeno, they're like, why would you pick Himeno? Because she's literally just a raging alcoholic and possibly just smells of smoke, most likely. And power just, like, she's hot, but she doesn't bathe. <laughs> but yeah, but it's more of the destructive power of it. The destructive power of power. Because it's I think it's more on the attraction side of she's like really I don't know how you explain it. It's like she's super hot but then she'll treat you like shit no matter what. But you'll still find it attractive. <clears throat> but then again I was like um but then you got some of like the more unconventional choices. But like some of the choices were a little bit. I don't know if you would class them as unconventional or ones that would seem a bit too obvious as well. Like you got um, characters such as Mitsuri from Demon Slayer, um, Aerith from Final Fantasy, or um, I'm trying to think, uh, Shuko Komi from Komi Can't Communicate. Like, you know, just to name a few. Or like Celti from Dorarara. I know at one point as well, uh, one of my old college friends got back to like ended up messaging me out of the blue. And he came to me with an offer on wanting to start a podcast. Where we just mostly just talk about general shit really. Uh I keep telling him I'm still down for the idea, but, you know, it's more of a case of trying to organise the whole thing. And, you know, we both got to try and plan it all out. <clears throat> but, but all in all, would I actually consider starting a podcast? I've toyed with the idea before, like, would I want to properly do a podcast? Most definitely, like, um, something along the lines of, like, other podcasts that I watch, such as, um like Trash Taste and Hack the Movies. Like two, um, yeah, two podcast channels that I do follow religiously. Like especially Trash Taste, because I do find those guys really funny. One day you'll be able to tell all the dragons about your amazing adventures. Sure, but what that I dude really just sounds like really Uncle Ruckus <laughs> from the Boondocks. <laughs> He's got that proper like Southern American accent. Now, I can't wait to tell all your friends about all my friends about our adventures.
But no, honestly, like, getting into more, like, my personal details. Well, not personal details, like, my personal life. The... I have tried branching out, like, because obviously I don't want to be stuck in retail forever. Like, I do want to do, like, Twitch and YouTube full-time as I go along. But I have looked into other stuff like uh, game testing, which I wasn't able to get in the end, unfortunately. Uh, mostly because it was the how much the training is. I actually had to pay to have the training done. And the training, I think the guy on the end, look, during the phone call, said that the training cost like around four grand. I was like, yeah, there's no way I'm going to be able to afford that. Like, even if I paid it in installments, it ain't going to work. Um, but I also did try signing up for voice acting. Um, but obviously voice acting takes a lot of talent and there's no way I'm going to be able to do that stuff at the moment. Like, if I, if I got the opportunity to voice act in, um, like, anime or even just, like, just for some shitty videos that people try to do, well, you know, I wouldn't mind in, in doing that at all. Like, it does sound like a neat idea. Oh, shiz. I fell over. <laughs> Just a bruh. There we go. Nailed that shit. Come on. There we go. Now, all I'm missing... I'm literally just missing gems, so it's not too bad. Just gotta find the fireworks. If I go in the right direction. Now, from what I hear so far, I think you can that you go nasally with your voice, it might work out. I do go, I do know I do tend to go a bit nasally with my voice, which does help, well, it does not help in the slightest, but that's mostly because at the moment I am suffering from allergies right now. So I've been, because it's getting that time of year now where I just got to take constant care of um, having my allergy medication. Like, it's not like a serious condition or anything like that. It's literally just um, a small case of um, rhinitis. <clears throat> Where it basically, like, but for what uh, rhinitis basically is, it's literally just I get really, really bad hay fever and shit all year round. And it basically just makes me seem like I'm probably going to die. <laughs> But then again, I do make things a little bit more dramatic than they have any more right to be. <laughs> but usually I do sound a lot more posh than what I feel like I need to. But I may be fancy, but I'm not that fancy. go 100% let's go <clears throat> there we go that is a risk I was willing to take From my work and what I've heard, customers reckon that I should go into radio. Yeah, I mean, 
like everyone always like gives like when you work with certain uh like you're so used to you know like how you are at work and things like that people would constantly um tell you like you know you should be you should go and try and get into this or try and do that it's like um at work where I work people tell me that I should either try um I remember I had a few customers ask, telling me, you should try and uh, aim for the manager's position. I said, no. If I was the manager of where I work now, I'd probably run it into the ground on purpose. Mostly because I just hate it there that much, but at the same time, I'm just staying there because it's mostly just convenient. It's more for the convenience of it. Like, you know, I don't have to travel very, very far or anything like that. <clears throat> and then I had other occasions where some people just say, you know, like, you should try and uh, do podcasts and stuff like that. Or like you can try and go into. So I remember my grandmother told me that, oh, you should try going into modeling. It's like, yeah, nah. Have you seen what I look like? On a scale of one to ten, I'm like a six, like a five or a six at best. <laughs> but now the one thing I definitely do know I'm planning as well in future. Uh, when I'm doing the my London trip to the convention I will be going in cosplay because I booked the ticket for the convention to do both days but luckily I so I, I was struggling to decide like what character I wanted to cosplay as because I know this will be like my first proper anime convention but the way I've planned it out is I'm going to do one day in cosplay and then the other day I'm just going to you know just go in casual clothing. So it's usually, it's mostly just going to be like, you know, meeting people here and there, having the lovely little chats. Because I'm always down for a good time. And I don't really mind meeting new people and stuff like that. I know the last anime convention I was aware of that happened in London, uh, one of the major voice actors that was there. Uh, that's fair to go with a simple job and do a course on the side. Oh, uh, for the character I planned on going to cosplay as, I initially wanted to go as a character from JoJo. So like my options for JoJo characters were um, either Gyro Zeppeli from Part 7, uh, the young version of Joseph Joestar, uh, Jodoro Kujo, or, um... Oh god, I'm trying to think, who was the other character I wanted to go as? Um... I think that might have been it, actually, for the Jojo character. But then I wanted to go as a One Piece character, so I thought I could probably try, like, going as Luffy, or Shanks, or Buggy. And one of my friends pointed out, saying, Maybe you should try going as um, Zoro instead. I looked into it, and I probably might actually end up going as um, Zoro from One Piece. So I think that's like the more closer choice that I might be sticking with at the end of it. Well, with the way how everything's going at the moment, I just still gotta buy the cosplay, and I will probably end up trying to grow my hair out again, just so I can dye it. But I'm only going to be wearing like a temporary hair dye. Oh, you'll need to get some swords as plastic or foam. Yeah, because I know um, the cosplay guidelines when it comes to weapons and such for conventions, they can be a bit... Um, I was going to say a bit arsy about it, but no, it's more like obviously the safety for other convention goers. Which I can super understand on that. So like obviously, you've got a convention full of like other people. Like if you were going to use a, like hold a firearm or something in the convention hall, I think the last thing someone would want is to get shot in the face with like a BB pellet or some shit. <laughs> Hence why, in my head, I was like, you know what, going as characters like Alucard from Helsing are probably going to be off the table for now. Ooh. 
Like, and they prefer foam more than plastic. Yeah, I think I probably might try and get the foam or plastic swords, but then again, I'm still weighing out my options because I still got a little bit of a while yet till I actually go to the convention. But I still got like a good like three or four months yet before I even actually leave for London. So I'm not leaving for London until like August. So I've got, I still got like plenty of time on my hands to try and plan it all out. But yeah, the when I looked at which voice actors were at the last convention back in February, um, the one that I missed, uh, they had the guy who does the voice of Yoshikage Kira from um, JoJo, but I also found out he does the voice of Wesker from Resident Evil. I was like, oh man, I'm super gutted that I didn't go. There's like two great characters that that dude just played. Like one that made my childhood from the PS1 by voicing one of the most iconic villains in games. And also voicing one of the best anime villains of all time. And, um, I'm trying to think who else was there. I think the, cause there are like certain voice actors I really would love to meet at some point in my life. Like I know you got some of the obvious ones like, uh, I imagine if you went with the main character from The Way of the House Husband. You know what, that would actually be sick. <laughs> like, I would so be down to do that. So I actually um, did get into Where the House Husband. Um, so I, I started binging it. The I think it was like not long after the first season came out. I started watching it because I wanted to get one of my friend's opinions on it, and she said that it was like absolutely incredible. So I ended up binging it all in one day, and I thought it was actually like the funniest thing I've seen in a long time. And I remember being super excited when Netflix put out the second season. I was like, hell yeah, I'm going to take an entire day off work just to watch it. Plus it's simple to pull off, you just need, just need to get a costume apron. Yeah, that is true. Like, I could just apply some product to my hair and all that, and then just wear like the, um, the little pug. Not pug, um... Oh god, I'm trying to remember the animal that he has on the um, apron. So it's like a, um, what is it? it's a Shiba, I believe, on his, um, on his apron. So I remember at one point I was invited to a Halloween party. Uh, not last year, year before. I initially wanted to go as Denji from Chainsaw Man, and I started working on building the chainsaws. Only for my sister to leave, because I was building the chainsaw models out of cardboard. Only for my sister to take them outside, and it was like completely pissing it down with rain. And I just remember the cardboard, so I only was able to do the arms. I didn't get them painted or anything, I just remember my sister left them outside in the rain, and they all just turned to mush immediately, and I went, Damn. Like, I was so gutted when it happened. So, literally last minute, I ended up doing um, Jack Sparrow instead, because I had the makeup done and everything for it. Because as a way of apologizing, my sister decided to, um... Yes, as a way of apologizing, my sister basically just put me in the... What was it? On a chair and then just did my Jack Sparrow makeup for me instead. Which surprisingly turned out quite well. Because <laughs> I remember I had the wig and everything. I, the only thing that was a... Well, I say a bit of a challenge. It, it took a bit of a while for me to master was trying to get his mannerisms down. Because obviously the only one that can ever actually do that is Johnny Depp himself. 
But no, there are um, voice actors in anime that I definitely so want to meet at some point. Like, I want to meet all the English dub voice actors that have played the main Jojo in each part. I also want to meet um, Chris Sabat, because obviously he's done so many good animes, and he's played so many fantastic characters. And like, He does the dub voice of Zoro in One Piece. He does um, Vegeta and Piccolo in Dragon Ball. And he does um, garter belt in panty and stocking. And he does um, all might in my hero academia. And then obviously you got like Sean Shemmel. Like that's like my childhood dream right there. Like just to meet Sean Shemmel, the English dub voice actor of Goku from DBZ. Mostly because like when it comes to like all-time favorite anime and manga, like Dragon Ball Z is immediately up there because that was like the first anime I properly watched all the way through from start to finish. And then you obviously got um, I think her name's Colleen Clinkenbeard, the woman who does the dub voice of Luffy in One Piece. But obviously, I don't know that's gonna be a bit of a stretch because um, well. One Piece is still like a big series, and I don't think that poor actress is going to be slowing down anytime soon. Because I know the dub recently got to um, near the end of the Wano arc, where Luffy has just gotten his most recent transformation, uh, Gear Five. I'm going to call it a night. It's 1 a.m. and it's been lovely to meet you, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your stream. Yeah, you too, Frenzy. Um, yeah, uh, make sure you uh, follow me on on Steam so you guys yeah, you can be up to date on more of my stuff. Uh, have a good night's sleep, my guy. And yeah, when I upload this on YouTube, feel free to um, interact as much as you like. And I'll see you when I see you. <laughs> That's nice. Always down to meeting new people. Be on the lookout for attack frogs. They are cold blooded killers. Attack frogs? And this used to be such a nice swamp. <laughs> this used to be such a nice swamp. Yeah, it was nice chatting with uh, someone new. I might have potentially gained a new friend. Mostly because I just enjoy um, occasionally interacting with all my... Well, er anyone that's just willing to watch my content, really. I'm just happy for a, a neat little chat. Also, did I... Never mind. I thought I saw an open path, but it turns out I was wrong. Because there's no way I was going to be able to make that jump. killing me right now. It's a horrible feeling you get when you have an eyelash stuck in one of your eyes and you just can't do nothing about it. Uh. 
That's the kind of existential dread I'm currently facing right now. Oh god, my eye. There we go. A bit better now. <clears throat> Damn it. Alright, I got that one life back. The demon. Thanks for releasing me. It seems like I've been trapped in here since I was your age. Oh no! Why? I remember. Uh, uh gotta go. Uh, damn, that must be you. Must be old. Like crazy old. Oh shit. Did I survive? Yes. Yes! There we go. There we go. God damn. Ah. And too much childhood trauma from these trees. No, bad cat. Come here. Good girl. You smell. Thank you for releasing me. Thank you for releasing me. Gonna collect more gems because I too like some shiny things. <laughs> you fucking thought. Go. What's going on, mate? Bubba. I'll tell you what to do with those creatures. Smash them, Spyro. Stamp them out and squish them and squash them. <laughs> <laughs> How about choosing uh, the uh, We are dragons, after all. You can try, but it will not work. I can't even aim right. 
because that's a pussy. Did I get it? Oh. So I guess there's still treasure missing. Ah, oh, yes, there is. Oh, I almost shattered brick then. I feel like my control is gonna die in a sec. Just about nailed it. Alright, so there's... Alright, so apparently there's this gem missing. Only trouble is, I ain't got sparks to help me out. Be in that area then. Alright. Just gotta make my way over there. There we go. Oh! Big brain. There we go. Oh, my legs are killing me right now. Sat here bloody cross legged. Uh, let's see, I've got almost all of that complete. I think I've got like one or two more levels left of um, Seed Maker's World. Alright, treetops, let's do it. Map. There we go. So I know this level I'm definitely going to need the map. We've got monkeys in this level. Double shot. There 
There we go. When I go through levels like this, you know it's going to be a struggle. Lyle! Hmm. Reading Spiral, for an amazing tour of the treetops, don't just stop at one supercharge. Ah. Yes, because in this level I can build up the supercharge and it's going to kill me. Very, very easily. Mostly because I find it very difficult to do this level. There we go. So, I do it this way. Why is my cat annoying me already? Majority of the things I need already. Cat. Oi. What are you doing? What are you doing? Get off my desk. I just realized you disconnected my phone. There we go. Yes, I know I've got to try and find a way up to that tippy top at the top of the tree tops. Because trying to get through this level is a pain in the air. A pain nonetheless. I can overlap the running speed. No. It don't work. <laughs> and I died. chicken up here. Oh well. Alright, taking me back to the beginning. This is just a dead end. Okay, cool.
Now we're back at the beginning of the game. Alright, come on. We got this. Spyro, if you jump at the end of a supercharge ramp, you can really go far. I'm all over it. There we go. I hear the voice, but I don't know where it's coming from. Well, I know where it's coming from. I just don't want to acknowledge it. Yeah, no, I completely bulls that. Come on. <laughs> Damn, I went far. <laughs> Yeah, no, that ain't gonna work. God damn it. Shit. Yeah, I think this might work. I'm trying to do this all from memory at the moment. No. Not the way I wanted it to. <laughs> Damn it.
<laughs> yeah, might as well just quickly lose that life. I'll take the I'll take the L on that one. Shit. But I'm my mind's working in the right place. I might have to look it up. <laughs> Damn it! Damn it. No. At this point, I'm just wasting lives right now. Yo, that was clean, don't go lie. Figure this out eventually. <clears throat> Just gotta take a little bit of persistence. Yeah, nah, that's not gonna work. <clears throat> yeah, I think I probably might try and uh, stop it there for a moment before I try and waste any more of my lives. But yeah, I'll, um, I thank everyone for joining me on the stream, and I will see you lovely lads and ladies in the next one.